Welcome to the North Pentecostal Church live stream, a place to be family. Good morning. I think I'm there. There it is. There's a lot of chatter, and I, I don't have much of a voice right now, so I'm going to have to ask everyone if they can, if they can uh, bring the chatter back a little bit. That's a lot of bass coming out now. So, uh, It's great to hear the excitement in people's voices, so that's good. Um, we have a number of things to go through this morning before we get into worship. We want to get business out of the way right off the start so the rest can just flow as we enter into the presence of Jesus. A um, couple of things off the start. You'll recognize that not all the chairs are back. There's still a few rows that have the placards about distancing. We've kept those there, and if you got the email, you'll have read that already, but we kept them there because there are some who still desire that knowledge of distance when we're in this kind of interior gathering. So as you see that and you see people that are there, if you just keep that in mind in that kindness factor of making sure that uh, you give them their space as they need, that would be wonderful. It is exciting to know that, and I see quite a bit of it right now, uh, that coffee is allowed back in. I just disappeared. Hello? Wow. That was... Anyway, the coffee is allowed back in the sanctuary. Maybe I wasn't supposed to make the announcement, that's why. Uh, <laughs> you are allowed to bring them in. We don't have our coffee bar set up just yet, but that is coming in the weeks ahead as we figure out the last few uh, items for it. What we do ask, just as a reminder, as we've said the whole time, um, when you drink your coffee, you just put your mask back up after the, after the sip. It's not a reason to say, well, I'm holding my coffee, I can keep my mask off. That, that's not the way we do it. That's... Uh, that, that's something else altogether. So please just support because we only have, if you've been kind of listening to the rumors about it, a couple of weeks of wearing these in here. So <laughs> let's move forward together. Let's just support this as we go. You have done incredible as we have walked through the craziness of this. So please help us in the last few weeks to just continue to walk through it and come out the other end and say, wow, the crazy is gone. Let's... Uh, Let's smile at each other again. So we'll move forward with that. Um, smiling is a good thing. It's, uh, it, it's a necessary thing. It helps with our own joy. So um, you'll notice as you came through, there's two things. The directory, if you haven't filled out your information, please do so. We need to make sure we get that done in the next couple of weeks because we want to be able to push those out to people so that you can contact one another. It'd be a good thing to be able to uh, communicate as we go forward. So if you can fill out your info, that would be awesome. The second thing is you came through the door. Uh, I will remark as well, if you didn't notice, the back doors are open as well. We do ask that you use this side, not the main office side, but use that side or the front doors to come in and exit. Um, but communion elements are outside. We are celebrating communion today. If you haven't gathered them, you might want to do that soon because we're going to do that in the midst of worship as we, uh, as we join in together with that. And I totally missed my number one note, and that is to say welcome. I, I, I said good morning, but welcome. All of you who are here, those who are longtime uh, attendees and those who are guests, if you are a guest and we have not been able to connect with you, um, there are cards on the chairs in front of you. If you're in the front row, um, they're just behind you. If you want to fill one out and just drop it into, uh, into the offering box or just at the information desk as you come through, It'll help us just to be able to communicate with you in the future to get all the information to you. That would be wonderful. But we thank you for attending with us and experiencing Jesus this morning as we uh, love to do. I'm almost done, I promise. I'm long-winded because I had to stay home for three weeks and work my way through COVID, and it wasn't <laughs> fun. Um, so I'm going to stay here as long as I can. Board nominations are due technically by Tuesday, but if you can get them in today... Please get those nomination forms if you, uh, into us. If you are a member, the nomination slips are out on the coffee bar and on the uh, information table over here. Just fill it out. Make sure you sign the paper and print your name as well. Otherwise, uh, the form is not allowed to be submitted, and your vote won't count for that. But please nominate uh, who you want to see on the board. Put some prayer into it. Get those nominations in. If you have an item that you want on the annual meeting, which is on the 27th, after morning service, 
and you have an item that you would like added to the agenda, it must be handed to a board member no later than the 17th. You have to have the agenda listed, what it is, the item, and given to a board member. Um, the names of the board members are on the nomination forms, so you can look and see who's there and hand it to one of our members, and that'll be added to the agenda. Um, talked about communion, talked about coffee. Oh, the knitting group. Anyone who wants to knit, crochet, quilt, uh, visit, <laughs> have some coffee. Don't keep my wife here till two o'clock. Um, I don't, just so you know, I don't sleep if she's out. It's just not possible. Partly because our dog is crazy. But, like, even if she's just across, I just don't. So, tomorrow, 7 o'clock, come on out and uh, get some work in on these incredible items that are being put together. Uh, Thursday at 10 is our Coffee and Conversations group. It has just been called Conversations, but now it's Coffee and Conversations. If you're interested in coming, we meet at 10 for about an hour, hour and a half. This week, what we're talking about is church speak. Do you know what that means? You know those things that you only hear in church? Statements like pray for travel mercies? We're going to talk about those things. We're going to talk about the origin of them, what they mean, why we say them. Um, it's not in a bad way. It's actually a lot of fun to, to kind of digest what it is. But if you have one on your mind that you'd like to know about, come on out Thursday at 10 and discuss with us as we talk about the things that we say in church. Um, Julie Wright said a couple of weeks ago when we were meeting and talking that those items, when you go to another country, they don't transfer. They look at you like, what are you talking about? It is kind of a North American thing, but that's what we're going to talk about Thursday morning at 10. It'll be fun, I promise. Finally, this week, prayer is moved to 6.30 because we have our nomination committee meeting at 7.30. So if you're coming out to prayer, be here at 6.30. It's going to be a great time. Um, it always is, but it's, it's just good to know when the body comes together and when we support one another and lift up the needs in prayer, God moves in incredible ways. And I'm going to share a little bit about that at communion, about something from the last two weeks in my life. But uh, we just want to make sure you know 6.30 this Tuesday instead of seven, come on out and join us. That's it. If you're able to today and you'd like to join us in standing to worship, I invite you at this time as we go into prayer and invite Jesus to come and minister to his people, and then we'll turn it over to Doug and the team. Stand with me. Father, thank you that we can work through all of this business and get it done and out of the way so that we can turn our eyes on you. Jesus, as we celebrate today, I pray that the excitement that is here is not manufactured, that it will be yours. That your joy would be contagious in this room and it would overtake us. Father, as you move, help us to be attentive. Help us to have ears to listen. That we would hear your voice, the leading of your spirit, and what you are telling each and every one of us. Jesus, come and minister to us as we celebrate you, as we worship you, as we give back to you what is fully yours, and that is all glory. Come and rest on your people today in Jesus' name. Amen. Says, I stand amazed in the presence. How marvelous. I stand amazed in the presence. Of Jesus the Nazarene, oh yes, and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned, unclean, singing how marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. Sing that again. How marvelous, marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior. Oh, he took my sins and my sorrows. He took my sins and my sorrows. Oh, he made them his very own. He bore the burden to Calvary. He suffered and died alone. How my 
marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love. All oh, when with the ransom, when ransomed in glory, all oh, his face I at last shall see. Will be my joy through the ages to sing of his love for me. Sing it how marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. He took my sin, he took my sin and my sorrow he made them his very own he bore the burden to calvary he suffered and died alone how how marvelous how wonderful and my song shall ever be how how marvelous how Wonderful is my Savior's love for me. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. He took my sins and my sorrows. How marvelous, how wonderful. Something that never changes, his love for us. You know, you look around the world today, things two years ago that we, were, we would say it's written in stone, it will never change. It will never change. Overnight, everything changed. Everything changes. But one thing. It says, I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. The same God who's never late. Many times we think he's late. We've got to yell and scream and wake him up, right? But it says the same God who's never late is working all things out. Working all things out. I count on one thing The same God who never fails Will not fail me now You won't fail me now In the waiting Same God who's never late Working all things out Working all Oh, sing that again I count on one thing same God who never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. Same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high. In the lowest valley, yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will. I count on one thing same God who's never failed will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. Oh, the same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will Bless your name, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. 
Yes, I will for all my days. Yes, I will. I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. Nothing can stand against. I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. Nothing can stand against. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will for all. Yes, I will for all my days. Yes, I will. I count on one thing, one thing only. You are my strength when I'm weak. You are my all in all. That's his desire today is to be your all in all. You know, we look to so many things, and many times we look to ourselves to get ourselves out of the mess we made. We figure we've got to be perfect to come before God. But God loves the broken things, the cry of a heart longing after him. He wants to be your strength this morning. He wants to be your peace this morning. He wants to be with you this morning. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I see. Make it a prayer this morning to be your all in all. Oh, seek him this morning. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all. Oh, you are my strength. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Yes, you are, Lord. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up. Oh, I'd be a fool. Because you are my all in. Oh, his name is Jesus. Jesus, Lamb of God. fall down when I fall you down, pick, me up. pick me up when I am dry, I am dry you fill my, fill cup. my cup you are my, you are my all, all in all his name is Jesus the Lamb Jesus is 
the Lamb of God. Worthy is your name. Taking my sin, my cross, my shame, rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in home. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. Cause you are my all, my all in all. Oh, his name is Jesus. Jesus, the Lamb of God, worthy is your name. It's Jesus, the Lamb of God, Lamb of God. Perfect Lamb of God. Lamb of God. Worthy is your name. Taking my sin, my cross, my shame. When I fall down. Do you ever fall down? All the time. He picks me up. When I just can't seem to sense him, when I just can't, it's just, there's nothing there. He fills me up so that I can overflow and flow out to those around. That's his, that's his joy this morning, to do that, to calm the inner spirit, to heal the soul, to touch hearts this morning. He says, there's a calm that covers me when I just take a moment to rest at his feet. There's a calm that covers me when I kneel down at your feet. It's a place of healing. It's a place where I find Oh, sing that again. Let that calm just flow in your spirit this morning. There's a calm that covers me When I kneel down at your feet It's a place of healing It's a place where I find Oh, find that freedom in Him there's a place my eyes can't see. There's a place my eyes can't see. Where my spirit longs to be. Where my spirit longs to be. It's in his presence this morning. It's a place of healing. It's a place I live in freedom. I'm going to lift my hands till I can reach heaven. I'm going to shout your name till the walls can fall and down. I've come to worship. I've come to worship. Oh, there's a love that lives in me. There's a love that lives in me. Oh, 
for you, Lord. For you, Lord, my Savior keeps, who breaks the sin that's binding, all leads me to a place of freedom. I'm gonna lift my hands till I can reach heaven. I'm gonna shout your name till the walls can fall and down. I've come to worship. I've come to worship. I'm gonna sing my song like I am unashamed. I'm gonna shout for joy. At the mention of your name, I've come to worship. All of you come to worship this morning. I'm going to lift my hands till I can reach heaven. I'm going to shout your name, the name of Jesus in this place. I've come to worship. I've come to worship. All oh, sing his song this morning. Oh, like I am unashamed, I'm going to shout for joy at the mention of your name. I've come to worship, I've come to worship. There's a calm that covers me when I kneel down at your feet it's a place of healing it's a place of my fine freedom i lift your hands this morning in this place i'm gonna lift my hand till i can reach heaven i'm gonna shout your name Till the walls can fall and down. I've come to worship. I've come to worship. I'm going to sing my song like I am unashamed. I'm going to shout for joy at the mention of your name. I've come to worship. I've come to worship. There's no one that can bring me peace, that can wash me clean like you, Lord. There's nothing in this world that can free me. Oh, you saved my soul. Yes, he did this morning. I'm going to lift my hand. Till I can reach heaven, I'm going to shout your name. Till the walls can fall and down, I've come to worship. I've come to worship. I'm going to sing my song. I I am unashamed, I'm going to shout for joy. At the mention of your name, I've come to worship. I've come to worship. There's no one, no one that can bring me peace, that can wash me clean like you, Lord. There's nothing, there is nothing in this world that can free me. He saved my soul. There's a place of freedom this morning at his feet. Father, it is, it is really good to know, Lord, that in your presence there is healing. That in your presence, in your name, Jesus, there is freedom from sin. That where you are is where we want to be. And when that is our desire, Father, when it is our passion to be where you are, that you don't hold back, that you give your all in the midst of every moment. 
So Father, as we turn to communion, as we worship You through the remembrance, the sacrifice of Jesus, Father, would You show Yourself strong for each one who has need, would You come and pour upon them according to Your will, which we bow to and understand is much higher than ours. Jesus, would You come and meet the needs of Your people today. We thank You, Lord, for Your excitement, for Your joy, for what You are doing in the lives of Your people. And we pray, Lord, that You are honored in our response. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm gonna. You, you can grab a seat. I'm gonna share a little bit of uh, a little bit of what I was fortunate to experience two weeks ago. Um, and I say fortunate because there is the hand of God in the midst of it, and that's what I want to emphasize. Um, my, uh, Michaela didn't, but the rest of us, because we were in the house, we all walked through that sense of, of dread of knowing that COVID is in the house. And it started with Bennett and then Preston and then Heidi. And almost 14 days later, I was walking around taking care of everyone going, okay, well, Lord, you've, you've done well and I thank you. And then I woke up on a Monday morning and went, oh, I feel horrible. And sure enough, I was positive and... The interesting thing is, is that everyone that I know who's had it said it kind of like it started and then it peaked eventually. Well, day one was my peak. I had weird symptoms throughout, but and still that kind of sense of being tired all the time still, but um, not all the time, sorry, but like simple things kind of wear you out. But Monday was weird because it started with just that congestion and sore throat. And I was like, well, that's what Bennett had. It's okay. And then a couple hours later, my body ached from head to toe. I had this piercing headache that was like the worst thing ever. Not migraine strength, but just this sense of like, I just need this to go away. It needs to leave. Get the upset stomach and you get kind of weak and dizzy. And by about the dinner hour, I could feel it on my chest, my shoulders, and I was kind of worried on day one. And so I sent a text to Liz to say, hey, can you cover prayer tomorrow night? There's no way I should be there. And by the way, if you can pray for me right now, things aren't great. And a half an hour later, I think I got a text back, how are you feeling? And honestly, in a half an hour, I went from like, I was seconds from calling an ambulance to, yeah, my throat's sore. Because I reached out and made sure I need to ask for prayer. And I say that because God did something in the midst of that. I do believe that it was the hand of God. And I, I had a day where I lost my taste and my smell, and, and mostly it was the head cold sense. But I was literally at that point where I thought, I, I need to go. And I reached out for prayer, and it turned it quickly. And I say that because I want you to know that if there is something in your body, whether it be kind of acute like that or long-term that you've been dealing with, you can turn and say, Jesus, I, I, I need your hand. Amen. And the Bible teaches that by his stripes we are healed. But I also want to make note of something. Because I am fully aware in my life, I have been praying for 35 years that God would heal me of diabetes. 35 years. And it has not happened. Because I believe that in that sense, just like Paul said, I asked the Lord many times that he would remove the thorn from my flesh and it has not gone that Jesus is sustaining me so I will have full reliance on Him. And we need to acknowledge that even though we ask and we plead and we lay before Him on our face and cry out, there will be times where He says, no, we're not yet. Because He wants us to absolutely rely on Him. And that's what I find in my life for 35 years. And however long it goes, I still pray every day, Jesus, take this away. But he sustains and he keeps and he uses it for testimony and for his glory. But be encouraged. If there is a need in your body, he wants you to come and to pray. And so we're going to share communion. I'm going to read the normal verse I always do. But then we're going to take a moment as the band leads 
And I'm going to ask you, because we're in that place now, if you're comfortable where you're at, to raise your hand and say there's a need. And that the people around you, if you're okay with it, could come and stand near you and pray. They don't have to lay their hands on you unless you ask them to, but that we can cover each other in that knowledge of prayer when there is a need in the body. And so, if you have your elements, you can prepare them. As I read from 1 Corinthians 11, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. The Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So we're going to do this a little bit differently. We're going we're to share in taking the bread. And when you take it, if that need is present, what I want you to do is say, Jesus, I thank you for your wounds which have promised healing. And as your will and glory sees fit, bring healing to me today. Let's partake together. It is the juice that actually brings that to the point where the wounds on the body of Christ make it possible for healing to rest. Because by the blood, you are set free from sin, welcomed into the family, the full goodness of God poured out on us in that. But that's where the promises rest, in the blood of Christ. So as we partake to get today in this juice, let's give thanks that the promises in Jesus are yes and amen. Father, you know each person in here. You know everything that's going on in their body and everything that does not belong. You know those, Lord, who face cancer. You know those who face lung issues. You know those who face crippling arthritis. Father, you know those who face anxiety and depression. You know every single need in this building. And You have designed the body to work a way that these things are not allowing to happen. And so, Father, we ask that You restore in this moment. Jesus, I firmly believe that You can restore, redeem, and renew everything You want to. So, Father, as we sing and people raise their hands in this place, I ask that You would come in power in this place. That needs would be met, that healing would flow. If there are people who have even that deep sense of we are financially in peril, cover it in Jesus' name. It's not a prosperity gospel, Lord. It's asking for our need and believing that you will do so. To give the day the daily bread and to bring the healing that your stripes have made a way for. Jesus, where your praise is, is where you are. And this atmosphere is ripe for a move of God. And so we pray that you would move in this place and bring healing in Jesus' name. If you have a need and you'd like people to pray, would you just stand where you are and declare that God is able. He is willing and He is able. I won't be home. Give me vision. See things like you do, God. I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do, God. I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision. See things like you do, God, I look to you, you're where my help comes from, give me wisdom, you know.
know just what to do, and I will love you, Lord, my strength. I will love you, Lord, my shield, and I will love you, Lord, my rock, forever all my days, I will love you. God, I look to you. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me a vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do. I will love you, Lord, my strength. I will love you, Lord, my shield. I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever all my days, I will love you, Lord. Hallelujah. God reigns, hallelujah, God reigns, forever all my days, hallelujah, God I look to you, I won't be overwhelmed, give me vision, to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do. And I will love you, Lord, my strength. I will love you, Lord, my shield. I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever all my days, I will love you. says, hallelujah, our God reigns. Hallelujah, our God reigns. Hallelujah, our God reigns. Forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God reigns. Hallelujah. Our God reigns. Hallelujah. Our God reigns. Forever all. Father, we declare this morning that our God, that you reign this morning in every situation, in every circumstance. You are not caught unaware. Song says you love the cry of a broken heart better than the hallelujah. This morning, God, we give you both a cry of a broken heart. God, I need you in this place. God, I need you in my life. God, I need you in this situation. For all else has failed, God, but you never fail. The God who never fails, the God who was never late. God, you know the cries of the hearts in this place this morning. The cries of those who are watching at home this morning. God, in this place, in their place, God, that you will move in only a way that you can. God, our faith is in you alone. Our trust is in you alone. Our hope, our hope of eternal life is in you alone. You alone are our source of strength. His name is Jesus this morning. God, we give you thanks in this place for a mighty work. God, that you desire to do in hearts, that we would turn our lives to you. We would look to you, not get distracted by things around us, but our attention would be on you alone. It says, God, I look to you. 
I won't be overwhelmed. My eyes are on you, Lord. All else, all others, it's a distraction from you this morning. We would give you praise in this place. Give him praise, he reigns this morning. Hallelujah, our God reigns. Hallelujah, our God reigns. Hallelujah, our God reigns. Forever all my days, hallelujah. Hallelujah, our God reigns. Hallelujah, our God reigns. Hallelujah, our God reigns forever. was different for you today if there was something new it's it's a biblical declaration that God moves among his people that he comes and he speaks to those when we are in the midst of worship when we come and praise he inhabits that place yes, Lord. 
And this is a frequent thing here that we believe God speaks because he is alive, he is able, and he wants to meet with his people. And that's what's happened today. I want to give you a little bit of encouragement from the Psalms before we uh, transition this morning. Because there will be a time when this is going to happen in your life. And here's what it says. It says, I waited in Psalm 40. I waited patiently for the Lord. And he turned to me and he heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. And blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not look around or look proud. Doesn't look to those, uh, to, doesn't turn to the side and look to those false gods. Many, Lord my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you planned for us. None can compare with you. Were I to speak and tell of your deeds, they would be too many to declare. This is confirmation of what was said here today. That his deeds are many, and they are here among us. And so I want to encourage you, if you reached out today, that your healing, it can be now, it can be tomorrow, it can be in a month, it can be in 35 years. But that he is able. And we can be confident and assured that he is willing. And so please do not stop crying out. Because the word declares he has heard your cry. Right. Father, I thank you for what you have started today. And in some, I even believe that you've completed it today. Lord, I ask for each one who lifted their spirits to you, opened their hearts, who cried out, that you would comfort them, that they would hear your voice, and they would know that you are moving strong in their life. And Lord, if healing in this moment is not what your will speaks to them, that you would sustain that you would see them through this and that your glory would not only manifest, but it would multiply on your throne because of what you are doing in the lives of your people. <coughs> Father, I pray as we share your word today that you would speak to us what this means. Thank you for each and every one here and the incredible testimony that's about to break forth. We bless you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you're not seated already, you can be, and the children are dismissed to preschool and stupor church. Carolyn.
pray completeness on these healings. It is good to share testimony because it shows that God is moving. And we also know that the Bible declares, and I've seen it in my life and others, that what he starts, he brings to completion. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for this declaration, but Mossy and Craig, and we pray over both of them that there would be complete healing. That what they are bringing to you, Lord, is of no consequence to your hand because you can overcome all things. Lord, you don't even work, you don't just work with positives or zeros, but you work with negative numbers and you make them positive to your people. And so we bring these needs and we declare your name over them, Jesus, that you would come and you would bring absolute healing in the midst of your people that even today or next week, whatever it is, that they would stand again and say, listen, we brought this prayer. We saw God move a little, but I want to tell you the final story now. And so, Lord, we thank you for faith, and we rise up together as one body and ask that you would bring absolute healing. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. No. Another one. Two. Okay, the excitement is real and that's good, um, and it does actually lead up to something that I need to say today, um, but we're starting with a picture of a trumpet, which to you is like, well, I don't understand why there's a trumpet on screen, 
Now, here's the thing. Um, I use this photo to start today because uh, I want to make something clear. There are sermons sometimes that a pastor has to come and preach, and they're not easy. They're difficult to prepare. They feel convicting along the way, and the pastor wonders during the process of preparation, will people hear it? Will they receive it? Will they apply it? These sermons come along infrequently, and when they do, it feels like they last for hours. We're already one hour in. They sound sometimes like a trumpet blowing in the corner of Young and Dundas in Toronto while standing on a soapbox. These sermons are painful. Today, my friends, I am not doing that. <laughs> you all thought I was getting ready to pull a whip out and beat the sheep. We're not going there. Because on the other side of the story, there are sermons that are an absolute joy to preach. They're easy to prepare. The pastor thinks about them often. And they wonder, how will they be received and applied, but in a good way? And today's sermon is a trumpet in the wilderness declaring the good news of who God is and how he wants to be seen by us. It's like a signpost in the desert showing this is where fresh water flows. So we're going to take a look at a lot of scripture today, and it starts a series. I wasn't going to do this series until May and June, but in discussion in the last little while with staff, I decided we're moving up. Uh, we're going to start today to talk about how the Spirit manifests with God's people. We're going to work through the gifts. We're going to talk about what that looks like, how you can get to them, how he pours it into you, and how you learn them, and what that all means. But we're starting today with a, pa or sorry, with a sermon that I have titled, The God of Full Measure. When I prepare a sermon, I approach it with one thought in mind. What's the big idea? Today I want to present to you a number of times that God proves he does not hold himself back from those who follow him. To better present this, we must first understand that God himself is absolutely accessible. That his very presence is never more than a word away. And by his divine nature, he longs to interact with us every single day in unending forms. His mercies are not only new every morning, but they're renewed every minute of the day and they rest on you even now. With every breath you take, that is a new mercy. So to start, I have a question. Have you ever said the words, God, show me your glory? Have you ever prayed that? Our main text today will be Exodus 33, but we're going to, and the story of Moses witnessing the passing of God's glory, but we're going to begin in Genesis 3 and Psalm 139, which will both be on screen for you. Here's what they say. Sorry, it's a little small, but reading from the ESV, Genesis 3 verse 8 says, And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among them in the trees, oh, sorry, among the trees of the garden. Psalm 139 7 says, Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? So we begin in the Garden of Eden where God literally walked with man. They had actual physical access to him. You imagine the possibilities of an earth that literally had the same spiritual makeup of heaven. That was the knowledge of what the garden was supposed to be. Heaven on earth. When Jesus said, would you pray that his will be done and his kingdom would come on earth as it is in heaven, it was the knowledge that Jesus is saying that what heaven is, Pray that that would be here. One day it will be in absolute glory and fullness. But we're supposed to actually pray that his will and his kingdom would be here now with us. There's no perceived sense of holding back in that moment. There's no thought of God, where are you? Physically, he walked with them. Now this was after their sin, but God is there with Adam and Eve walking. And he, they hear his footsteps. Next, we go to David, who with a sense of unbelievable insight to God's very character, describes the inability for man to hide for even one second from his presence. If you continue in the psalm, you will see that even darkness that can hide me from you 
If you've ever been in this building at night when the lights are off, you can't see down the hallway. You can hide from one another. But in absolute darkness, all void of light, you can never hide from the presence of God. In valleys, up on mountains, even in the depths of the ocean, God is still there. His presence and care is literally with you everywhere. David declares that for you. Back to the question, have you ever prayed the words, God, show me your glory? Now this won't be on screen, and it is quite lengthy. We're reading from Exodus 33, verses 7 to 11, and then we're going to read into chapter 34. Here's where it starts, the tent of meeting. It says, Now Moses used to take a tent and pitch it outside the camp some distance away, calling it the tent of meeting. Anyone inquiring of the Lord would go to the tent of meeting outside the camp. Whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people rose and stood at the entrances to their tents, watching Moses until he entered the tent. As Moses went into the tent, the pillar of cloud would come down and stay at the entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. Whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, they all stood and worshipped, each at the entrance of their tent. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Then Moses would return to the camp. But his young aide Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. Now if you move down to verse 18, and we're going to read to verse 8 of chapter 34, it says, Then Moses said, Now show me your glory. And the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you, and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. And then the Lord said, there is a place near, uh, near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put, my, put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I pass by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. Um, We're going to skip a little bit of this, but down to verse 4, after the instruction of chiseling out the the, uh, commandments, it says, Moses chiseled out the two, two stone tablets like the first ones and went up to Mount Sinai early in the morning, and the Lord had commanded him. And he carried the two stone tablets in his hand. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed his name, the Lord. And he passed in front of Moses, proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands, and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents in the third and the fourth generation. Importantly, it says, Moses bowed to the ground at once and worshipped. But if you move down to verse 29, When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the covenant law in his hands, he was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. (coughs) His face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. Now, verses 7 through 11 are a precursor to the glory that passes by Moses. Moses made an intentional practice of going to the tent of meeting, speaking with the Lord and worshiping Him. And I believe that God saw this and took it as an opportunity to both prepare Moses for what would soon come on Mount Sinai and to acknowledge the desire of Moses to know God. When you say those words, show me your glory, is your first desire beforehand to know God. You have to want to know him. You have to have a tent of meeting if you want to have a moment of glory. If we go back in time a little more, Exodus 16.10 says, And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in a cloud. See, there's a rich history of God's glory coming around the Israelites, not just in the book of Exodus, but throughout the whole Bible and all of their history. 1 Kings 19, which will be on screen, shows God meeting with Elijah. There's a greater context to it, but this is the portion we read. It says, And he said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by. 
And a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke it to pieces, the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in a cloak and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? You know, funny how when we pray for the glory of God, God, show me your glory. What we want is the earthquake and the wind and the fire. Elijah went out to meet with God and he had some valid issues to deal with, and namely the fact that he's the last prophet proclaiming the name of the Lord rightly. And the people wanted to kill him as they'd killed the rest. So God instructs him to go and to wait on Mount Horeb, where God would then go and meet with him. First comes this wind tearing apart everything around him, and then a great earthquake, and then this consuming fire. And in all of it, God is not there. The God who created all things, who can tear it all down, can also come as he did to Elijah and often does in a gentle whisper. See, the complete presence of God was on display for Elijah in that moment, and it teaches us to not always want the wind and the fire and the earthquake. Sometimes, often, what we need is the soft voice of God comforting us, speaking to us, asking, why are you here? This is what Elijah needed and is what God delivered. Sometimes we ask God, show me your glory, and he responds in kind, but not the way we want. Show me your glory, Lord. I want fire to fall on me. And he says, hold on. i got to walk you through something first. So far we've looked at Moses and early Israel and now probably the most well-spoken of prophet in the Old Testament. But what about us? How do we have full access to the presence of God? How can we call on him and say you are the God of full measure and make that statement true? Know that statement is true. And say that God never holds back from those who love him. It's a wonderful question. I'm so glad you asked it. How many of you were actually asking that question? Here's the answer. Again, we ask this question that's on screen. God, show me your glory. Have you ever prayed this? Remember the verse in Psalm 139 that we can never be apart from his presence? We're about to see how this came to pass thousands of years after David wrote those words. We're going to look at Hebrews chapter 9 to start, not on screen. Again, a good chunk of scripture. Yes, there's a lot of slides, but we're moving through quickly, and I'm almost done already. So, I didn't mark this one. That's to my error. But we're going to Hebrews 9. We're going to read verses 1 to 10. If I can find it. My Bible is not turning pages. You know when you have a Bible that is new? <laughs> I replace my Bibles pretty often. And all my pages are sticking together. Okay, verses 1 to 10. Now the first covenant had regulations for worship and also an earthly sanctuary. Tabernacle was set up in its first room There was a lampstand and a table that was consecrated with consecrated bread. This was called the holy place. Behind the second curtain was a room called the most holy place, which had the golden altar of incense and the golden covered ark of a covenant. This ark contained the gold jar of manna, Aaron's staff that had budded, and the stone tablets of the covenant. Above the ark was the cherubim glory of the glory overshadowing the atonement cover, but we cannot discuss these things in detail now. When everything had been arranged like this, the priest entered regularly into the outer room to carry on their ministry. But only the high priest entered the inner room, and that only happened once a year. And never without blood, which he offered for himself and the sins of the people that had committed in ignorance. The Holy Spirit was showing by this the way into the most holy place had not been disclosed as long as the first tabernacle was still functioning. This is an illustration for the present time, indicating that the gifts and the sacrifices being offered were not able to to clear the conscience of the worshiper. They are only a matter of food and drink and various ceremonial washings and so on. This is the old system. Only one person, once a year, after a blood sacrifice, could go into the Holy of Holies. 
Some priests would go into the holy place, but the most holy was only once a year by one person. This is the old system. When David declares, where can I go from your presence? It's the knowledge that the presence of God hovers on the earth. But in that holy of holies was the absolute immeasurable knowledge of who God is. History tells us about this curtain or veil that covered the holy of holies. It says one, uh, sorry, one research portion says Solomon's temple was 30 cubits high, which is 1 Kings 6.2, but Herod had increased it to 40 cubits, according to the writings of Josephus, a first century Jewish historian. There's uncertainty to what a cubit actually is, but it is safe to assume that the veil from floor to ceiling was about 60 feet high. It's a curtain or a veil that is 60 feet high. Early Jewish tradition tells us that this veil was four inches thick. You ever moved like a four by four carpet that's an inch thick and realize that's kind of heavy? Imagine one that's 60 feet high, about 20 feet wide, and four inches thick. And it was woven together, the book of Exodus tells us, from blue, purple, and scarlet material with fine twisted linen. This is a very large and heavy curtain. And it was indeed a fine structure in itself. Which makes this next passage we'll share all the more important in the discussion of God's accessibility. Matthew 27, 50 to 51. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. What kind of force does it take to tear a curtain or, or, or a carpet or anything in the first place, but one that is four inches thick? 60 feet high from top to bottom in an instant. Imagine the power in that room to tear it apart. And the earth shakes, which is surely yet another sign of his presence, but in this case, not coming in one person, instead leaving the contained most holy place and going throughout all of the earth. The death of Christ brings us to a state of full access to the Father in a way that we can truly make the declaration that when we call on God, he brings himself completely and gives to us in full measure, not a portion, but indeed all of who he is. When we pray, God, show us your glory, what we're actually doing is saying, God, show me all of who you are. Let's talk about that. We're going to go back into Exodus. Here's the verse that is of main concern on screen. Moses said, please, Show me your glory. And he said, God said, I will make my goodness pass before you. Now notice that Moses says, show me your glory, but God returns and says, I will make my goodness pass before you. There's a very important reason that God changes from glory to goodness. It's not a change in nature that God is representing, but rather the fullness of what Moses is about to experience and what he has promised each of us now as well. The Hebrew word for goodness, and I'm going to butcher it, is tub. It means good in its wildest sense. In other words, nothing withheld. The fullness of goodness. For Moses, he wanted the glory of God, but he had, never, sorry, he had already experienced that in different ways to this point. The glory of God was in the cloud that met him at the, town, the, the tent of meeting. He's about to experience the fullness of God. See, God wanted Moses to have full accessibility to who he is, an absolute measure of his goodness and his being. He wanted to show Moses all of himself, not just what the human mind can comprehend as glory. So where does this bring us? What is God's glory really? Not the human understanding, but God's actual glory. What is it? John Bevere wrote it this way. The glory of the Lord is everything that makes God God. All of his characteristics, his authority, his power, his wisdom, literally the immeasurable weight and magnitude of God are contained within his glory. Nothing is hidden and nothing is held back. The goodness of God on full display. So how is that accessible to us? John 14, 16 says that Jesus tells them he's going to the Father and he will send the Helper to be with us forever. In verse 17, we're told he'll live with us 
And in verse 20, we're told the helper is the Holy Spirit. See, as we understand it, the Holy Spirit is one with the Father and Son. As outlined here, the Holy Spirit is always with us. In all this, he can conclude, we can conclude one truth. With the Holy Spirit alive in us, we have the full measure of God available to us every minute. If the team can prepare to come back. Nothing is withheld when the Spirit is alive in us. So the next time you pray, God, show me your glory, or God, show me your goodness. You can go in confidence that the Spirit who lives in you is preparing you for what God will now do in that moment. And with a humble heart, you will see that He will give His all to you. And when we call on His name, He's actually already here. So when you go in confidence, I suggest to you that God will show you more and more of who He is and how the fullness of His glory is shown to you in different ways. But today, today I want you to leave here knowing after we worship that you have full open access to the Father, to His heart, to His hand, and to His face. You can call on Him and see how He moves in your life. Now I start with a message called the God of Full Measure before we talk about the gifts because we need to know that they are accessible just as He is. But it starts by knowing Him. We don't just go in and get the gift. We go in and know him first. We seek his face, just like Moses did in the tent of meeting. And then the goodness is poured out on us. So as we worship again, as I pray, I want you to stand and ask God, I want to know you. Don't pray that he shows you his glory right now. Pray, God, I want to know you. I want to be in the tent of meeting. And when you go home today, find a place and make it your tent of meeting. Let's stand together. Father, thank you. Thank you for the example of Moses who put time aside every single day or at least very often to go in to meet with you face to face. Thank you, Father, that your glory showed to him repeatedly and then that day your goodness, all that makes God God, was shown to Moses as you passed by. This is accessible to us because the veil is torn and your holiness went out across the earth and by the person of the Holy Spirit, we have absolute access to all of heaven's resources and you are the first of those. So Jesus, as we worship, I pray that we will know you. Father, that we will know you. Come in this time. Show us who you are. Help us, Lord, to know you. In Jesus' name.